everybody, welcome back. Now, I did go home after the last little adventure, re-equipped and had a meal, and I decided it was such a lovely evening, I would come out and have another go and see if we couldn't do another film. Now, I haven't come far, only about a mile or so, but this little station, this little train station, is part of what's called the RH and DR, so Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway, and we are at, or I'm sitting at Dimchurch Station. Now, I was born and bred here, and I have fond memories of growing up with this uh, little station. And as kids, we played around here. Probably shouldn't have done, but we did. We had a lot of fun. And as I say, I got lots of lovely memories of this place. Now, uh, this was actually built in 1927. And as I say, there are three stations. Well, four if you include Dungeness, which was uh, right out on the famous Dungeness uh, spit next to the lighthouse. But this is just one of the stations, and if you go that way, you head towards the Hyde Station, and almost this way, you go through uh, to towards New Romney. So anyway, I'm going to sit and get ready, and hopefully, we'll do a little sketch of almost what you're seeing there, and we'll see how it turns out. Catch you all soon. Yeah. The pen I'm going to be using is this one, Hong. Dian, Hong Dian, and it's the Blue Forest uh, pen, something like that, but I'll confirm that in the details. <laughs> anyway, let's put that to one side for a moment. But what I suggested to you guys earlier was to literally draw first, plan the bigger shapes, and once you've got those marked in pencil, you can erase those lines later on. But first and foremost, let's just see what we've got here. We've got this big old footbridge going across and we've got the big towers. I say they're not big towers, are they? These are actually uh, supporting uh, and one of them is a large toilet block, believe it or not. And uh, the other one is just a store. But I think it works very, very well. I want it over here anyway. I'm gonna put that sort of shape there. And I want the railway tracks to sort of come through there, somewhere like that. I think this actually needs to come up there and I think this roof needs to come up there. Much cuter angle than I've allowed for. If you're not sure of an angle, put your pencil on the angle and then transfer that mentally in your head or using the idea of a clock face and just transfer that to your paper. That actually then extends the wall of our house.
There we go. We have one, two, and we have another one here, which we can't actually see too much because of the meshing on here. And I think there's just another one up in here, which you can just see, almost see little bits of. We have the lovely dim church um, sort of insignia that runs up through there. this drawing but anyway enough of that let's start inking it up let that dry and see if we can't get the color down so i'm going to use that now i'm going to start on this side hopefully we've got it working nicely and yeah let's just see what happens so i'm literally inking this stuff up now we got the gutters we can put as much or as little detail in and at this point we can get away with doing an awful lot purely and simply because we've done the initial drawing so there is the uh, also lovely magpie on the line uh, it wasn't there who has gone before i could even think about sketching them out all right now i'm going to come down here with this wall What we're going to do now is we're going to take this roof there and up there's the chimney there's a little return back over there so now we have our chimney take that roof line all the way up and out of the picture we have the e this end these two should be the same angle if they're not then take steps to make it so if you can
Lots of little dark spaces there, just trying to backfill some of that so we can almost leave some of the lights of different parts in place. So I'm just going to block out some of this so we can see some light running through. I don't think I need to do any more. I think that's enough. Um, we've got our fence, as I say, running through the back there. That's all good. Strengthen a few more of these lines. We have our posts. All right. Everything and the shadows have changed dramatically. Let's come back to this storeroom. Let's just put that line up through there. take the, the erase all the pencil off clean it up as best I can and then we're going in with some washes okay there we go catch you all in a minute and we'll carry this one on a little bit there other bits I forgot that's it done done okay the pen can go away and we can take the eraser out just going to clean up a lot of these lines if I can try and make them a little bit lighter Okay, so as before, we're going to get the pouch, get this little watercolour set out, and there we go, already from last time. Now I'm holding the paper as best as I can, and I've got my palette in my hand, but it's very, very hard to hold both. Alright, so I'm going to come in with just some basic washes. Just going to come in here and put in we've got very little sky but i am going to run a little bit of blue a little bit more blue green than blue just going to run that through here as our sky color it's just incidental it's just there it's a token but it does give reference to the fact that there is a sky above and a couple of these i'm going to leave out and not paint them bits in right just to finish that little bit off there. Okay, so we've done that area in. I'm gonna come across here with the bridge. Now, I'm gonna put this yellow in to begin with, all the way through. There are warning chevrons across that, but when that's dry, we can actually either come in with a pen if we wish to, or we can come in with um, just some black paint or dark paint if we want that. So I'm quite happy with what that's going to do. I'm going to leave a couple of little pops out there. I can suggest maybe a colour thought, some flowers. Leave that to dry and repeat this side. But this side is a little, that's actually very much the same colour. So I'm going to come across here, down, leaving that little lead edge 
and some areas down the bottom here for the flowers and on through there bring some of that across this way too there we go let that to dry then we're going to come back in with some more trees and bushes and shrubs. I think this though is dry enough to carry on with. I want quite a darkish colour. I want a quite a dirty grey colour. So I'm mixing up some cobalt blue. A bit more water, not too much. This are, you know, at the end of the day, these are just washes at the moment. The ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of um, burnt sienna in there, just to knock it down to a grey. Maybe a warm or a cool grey according to your needs. And the rest beyond that is grass. So I'm going to leave that there. That's our platform done. I use some same colour here. I'm just going to come in here and put in the platform on this side. much less of it but it's quite wide and add in a little bit more of those mixes that I was using just now a little bit of oh, a little bit more blue just get that a little stronger color through there so there's that and we've got some lovely um, car shadow to put onto this before we finish so we'll come back into that but essentially that part's done what I've got to do now is I've got to look at the rail between now the rail color I'm going to put in a lot of burnt sienna to this that is dirty and there's lights as well so I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in a little bit of ochre on this side now the ochre is mixing with everything else in there so first and foremost I'm going to run through a lot of this not that white edge and me need to keep that lovely little white edge of the platform station but there we go now we've got that lovely light running through there but this for me is just an initial color a little bit of some cadmium or indian yellow and i want to run that as a very strong color accent through there now that looks very strong you'd be right but it will dry much much lighter so don't worry too much but that is a very strong yellow mark so i'm going to put that in there leave that to dry and forget about it for now what i want to do is to add in some greens for the bushes over on this side Right, but what I do want to do is mix up our cool blue uh, green doors. Lots of, of ultramarine blue. And look at that, it's almost there. I think it's strong enough to do the job. And bring that all the way down through the door frame. And I'm going to stop almost dry brush at this point. You don't get true dry brush effects on this smooth paper. But it does have some effect. I think that works very, very nicely. that works just needed to bring out light on the faces of those pillars a little more than I've got them all right now there are no cast shadows under there the light's gone from that area 
So I'm going to use some of the um, beautiful, oh, what's that guy? Couple of mallard just flown over. A little bit of the Venetian red, a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna, and a touch of blue just to kill the redness a little bit. And I want to bring that through here. This is the shadowy area of the railway tracks. Grungy, dirty yellow, a little bit of blue into it, not too much. We're going to put in the shadow side of this building. Let's bring that down. Need to make our building look three dimensional. It pretty much just washes, but I'm just changing the values. There we go. Now we have that lovely two dimensions. This one is almost in pure shadow now. So let's just come back in and mix a little bit more of that up, a little bit more blue into that. Maybe a little bit more of that red, a little bit blue. Okay, make enough of it, of course. Let's just come back in here and put the whole of this area into the shade. That will actually accentuate that little light area. So pretty much we're done. The only thing I really want to do is accentuate some of these darks in certain areas. Now the light here is becoming quite strong. So I want to mix up a gray. I'm going to use some alizarin. I'm going to use some of that greeny gray. Look at that lovely gray there. A warm gray, but I like it. So I'm going to bring that through here. Now this is our strong strong shadow area on our platform taking that all the way up through there under there all the way through here So that's in, that's sorted, and we've got some dark. Now let's use the same color. Let's just beef it up a little bit. A little bit more water, but not much. We're gonna use some of these other colors, some of the neutral tint down in the back corner here, and probably a little bit of red into that, a little bit more blue into that. Just making a tidy dark, but it's gonna be fairly strong of color.
just run that line down if we can get away with it this time the brush is still splitting up I'm just going to go for it and take that line all the way through the end So you're going to have to forgive me for the mayhem of railway tracks. But there we are. It's a little sketch. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. It's taken a while, um, but it's been a lot of fun, I've got to say. And um, I hope you've got something from it, even if it is not how to do railway tracks. But uh, yeah, the angles are a little bit way off here. And um, it's part and parcel of, of the learning curve, isn't it? We, we do a little bit and we learn a little bit and we do a bit more. A couple of little things that I've seen, I just want to change a little bit of yellow into some of this color. And just get a bit more water. A couple of little bits just to help out with the suggestion of shadows under it you know giving a sense of recess on there on that building and on this one of course through there there's not a lot more well there is actually there are quite a bit more i'm going to use some of this gray color to bring this line down through here like that Take that and suggest that there is a little bit of light coming through there. Now, I can't put the lines that are here running across because we're down here somewhere. So it's just a little darker. There you go. Right or wrong, it's... Okay, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun doing it. There are certain things about it that didn't go to plan. Certainly the tracks on here did not go to plan. And, um, yeah, I completely got those wrong. But not to worry. I think the idea was to show you guys the pen, the way that that nib works with thick marks, thin marks, scratchy marks, and just generally doing a wash over your ink drawing. And, of course, doing the pencil work first and then inking over afterwards now as i say it wasn't quite right in one or two places but i think it was quite a complex subject but if you've enjoyed this i hope you have i hope you get something from it anyway even if it isn't even if it's just not how to draw railway lines but um join me in the next one if you've enjoyed this content please give it a big big thumbs up that would help the channel greatly if you're not a subscriber then please subscribe to the channel i will take a photograph of this and put it up on my patreon so if you want to nip over to my patreon next week and you can download the uh, the image if you wish to and have a go at this one yourself and uh, see how you get on and uh, put your versions up on the painting with paul apps uh, over on facebook and indeed if you want to look at my patreon a little closer and get involved you'll be so so welcome so much on offer you'll enjoy it so much and uh, hopefully you'll become one of my latest patrons and i look forward to welcoming you if you do in the meantime i'm going to get set up think about next week's video i catch each and every one of you next week at friday at 3 p.m have a great week enjoy your painting stay safe wherever you are bye bye Hi everyone, and welcome back to an outdoor outing part two. I don't know. I get it. Hi everybody, and welcome back to a plein air sketching day part two, the sequel, <laughs> the aftermath, whichever you want to call it.